Tiger Crisis podcast uh, about Tiger King, the Netflix documentary. This is episode six, corresponding with episode six of the documentary. If we're being honest, it's getting harder and harder to watch the documentary, and it is very hard to watch it twice, which sort of supports my idea that it is reality television. There's no reason to see these types of episodes twice. Uh, especially in the framework of a documentary because it's trying to assert certain things, right? If you watch like a regular reality show, then what happens is they're not making any assertions at all. They're actually, it's just trash and it's recyclable and you can watch it. Like there's shows on MTV that are clip shows that you can just watch over and over and over again because you don't remember, you don't retain anything. With Tiger King, you retain some things and then what happens is you also, there are spoils, So we know by the end of the documentary that um, Joe Exotic is in prison for this murder for hire thing. Episode six basically takes on this element uh, from a preliminary standpoint. It doesn't go all the way into the, the, the notions of it. It just sort of like hits it on the head from the beginning. And it's sort of starting to feel like the more you watch it and the more you dissect it this episode uh is sort of just a hodgepodge of things and episode five felt that way and the only reason why it was super entertaining when you first came out of the gate was because you hadn't seen it before and it was totally crazy and new and how can this storyline that's going off on uh tangents and rails uh, how can it continue to spiral i want to speak directly to uh someone who commented on twitter uh, who said, uh, hey, man, was was listening to the podcast, uh, but then stopped because it got political. I just want to state that 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 situation first. Now, I haven't gone back through. I'm not just listening to myself on podcasts over and over again. So I haven't gone back through really the details of exactly what I said. But I think what he's talking about is the fact that I um, compared Trump to Joe Exotic, which let me just say from the standpoint of artistry, um, I, I didn't do that. Right. So the, the show did that. The show, the episode of the show was called, uh, making America exotic again. And my assertion was that pretty much we're in a position now where, um, we can elect a clown. We can elect somebody who's pure entertainment. It has nothing to do with, uh, policies or politics and saying that, uh, is not inherently political. And then saying anything about our president is not inherently political. Um, so I'll just say that to get that out of the way. Um, but then the, now that I'm saying that, that, that it actually sounds false. So I guess I guess I guess I was being political. Uh, I've done uh, I've gone out of my way not to really state much about my feelings towards the president. But I do know that um, the leap between the Trumpster and the Joe Exoticster is not that far. However you feel about the thing. And it feels like. Uh, the people that support Joe Exotic might be the same people that support Trump, and I think that's a, that's a correct assertion. Um, and if and if it upsets you, that's fine too. Um, send me your comments. All right, so episode six of uh, Tiger King Netflix documentary opens up with Jeff Lowe being arrested in Vegas. Now, it gets harder and harder to track the timeline. So what it appears like is the timeline was Joe is fighting with Carol, right? Uh, Carol. And Joe end up in this lawsuit situation where Carol and her new husband sue Joe. And they're trying to get the use of their name back. Joe has just started a company that has the name uh, Big Cat Rescue in it. And they don't think that that's cool because obviously that is the name of their company. So please don't do that. Uh, That's our company. Just stop doing that. And we're cool. Joe decides he's not going to stop doing that. Uh, And instead he countersues. It's all frivolous shenanigans. Pretty much if he went on Judge Judy or any of these other shows, they would just say, cool, man, just stop using the name. We're good here. Uh, he didn't do that. He, he racked up a bunch of lawyer bills. The lawyer bills have nothing to do with Carol Bask, and the lawyer bills have to do with the fact that he's trying to fight a frivolous lawsuit that he doesn't need to fight. Okay, sidestep. Jeff Lowe comes in, says, I'll take care of the back bills. They give him a new number. Uh, basically, a Joe owed something like 50 or 60 grand. They said, look, if you give us 30 grand, we're good. Uh, that's sort of where we left off on one of the episodes in the Joe Low, Jeff Lowe situation. Uh, Joe signs the zoo off to Jeff. 
and then goes and uh, does his thing. Jeff and Joe are not seeing eye to eye. And what happens is Jeff goes to Vegas and starts doing some shenanigans where he's bringing tigers into lobbies of hotels, getting girls, having sex parties. This is sort of all, again, not speculation. This is what's happening in the thing. So we know that's happening. So Joe ends up getting arrested. Jeff Lowe ends up getting arrested for bringing uh, tigers to hotels. At this point, he has a Vegas property, which I think he, he had the whole time. Um, and then he ends up, they end up coming by uh, to figure out what's going on with the animals. And what, ha- what we found out from this episode is that um, Fish and Game is a federal organization. So it, it, there's a lot of money and, and a lot of uh, power behind it. So uh, they show up, they pull all his animals, and they end up finding like loads and loads of guns. Um, he goes and sees the judge virtually and they give him 179 days if he does anything else. They said, look, if you stay out of uh, trouble for the next year, uh, you don't have to do your 179 days. Otherwise, you got to do the 179 days. So the timeline is sort of Jeff goes away. Joe's still running the park, but Jeff owns the park. But then Jeff gets in trouble in Vegas So then Jeff ends up coming back after Vegas to hang out with Joe and finds that Joe has spent somewhere in the vicinity of $88,000 on his political campaigns between governor and president, and some of which was $60,000 in condoms, other things with Joe's face on them, and they were paid for by the park. Uh, Jeff is on camera yelling and absurd about the fact that this is illegal. You can't, you can't, you, that's not how you can run, you can't run a business that way where you have the, the theme park, the zoo paying for your campaign. So whatever happens in that exchange, they, the, the documentary blows it all up and Joe Exotic says, fine, he'll walk away. And then at this point, uh, the claims all around are that Jeff Lowe is getting ugly. Uh, so Joe goes outside and burns up all the paperwork because he's worried he's going to get hit for tax evasion and then says he'll leave, ends up drugging a bunch of tigers, trying to sell them on the open market and kind of sliding out of there. As he's trying to slide out and sell tigers behind Jeff Lowe's back, Jeff Lowe finds out, gives him a threat uh, and says, look, man, if you come back in the park, I will shoot you. From that point on, Joe goes, Joe, goes, Joe goes into hiding and starts telling people on the internet that he's in Belize or whatever. So now this is where we start getting weird with the filmmakers in the documentary because it seems like they don't really know what the story is when they're telling it at this point. So at this point in the timeline, we're, at, we're, up, to, we're up to like 2017, mid to late 2017. Joe has left the park. Jeff has taken over the park. All the bills are still hanging over Joe's head for the for the the lawyer business. And that's how the Jeff Lowe situation happens. So Joe leaves. Everybody at the park starts telling people that Joe has retired because that's why you go to that park. You go to the GW Zoo to see uh, Joe Exotic because he's a maniac and he's somebody fun and he's something that that brings a lot of joy to people. He really is. He really is this. He's he's like a ringleader of a circus. Uh, and that's what the role of the ringleader is, is you control the tigers. You, you hype up the situation. You show the bearded lady and then you, you know, and then you you uh, sell merch at the end. That's always who Joe was. And that's always what was great about the park. Jeff Lowe sort of ha- has a different interest in tigers, which is like sex parties and like being cool and wearing clothes of a 15 year old for the rest of his life as a 60 year old man. So you got these two opposing forces and now uh, the whole beauty of the GW zoo is missing because Joe's gone. Um, And this is the real sad part. Again, I said uh, an episode ago and two episodes ago that this documentary really does a good job of making Joe the hero and making us feel for Joe and this is another one of the ones it's like I, there are moments where they want us to feel like Joe is an ass and they want him, they want us to feel like Joe made some mistakes and Joe did some things illegal with money. But of course he did. He has he, he owns a tiger zoo that he made up in his backyard. So, of course, the guy doesn't really know how to run finances. He was using Walmart meat to feed his employees and his tigers. He hired mostly homeless meth addicts. Of course, the guy's not keeping solid books, right? So whatever the Jeff Lowe situation is, uh, he starts bringing in his crew 
at the point when he starts to be in charge and he brings in this guy named Alan Glover, who uh, apparently also has a record. Now, Jeff Lowe's got a record. They start bringing in this guy named James Gerritsen, who, if you ever saw anything related to the Tanya Harding debacle, he sort of reminds you of this this Tanya Harding character who's like uh, Jeff Galuli's best friend, this sort of like overweight guy. Um, I'm, I wrote down his name somewhere. This overweight guy in the Tanya Harding debacle was named... Uh, I'm not finding it. But he... Uh, He's the same kind of guy. He's just like he claims that he has some connection to the law. He claims that he has some sort of background that has anything to do with knowing about the law and knowing about businesses and being a federal informant. And he's none of these things. So these guys start going after Joe because he sold tigers behind their back because he left him with this park that they find out has no ability to make any money without Joe and they start getting ridiculous so everybody starts getting ugly Jeff's getting ugly because he's firing everybody from the business he's brought in his two uh, his two strong guys to uh, to like reshape the park and do all these things he's telling anybody that comes in that they can uh, that Joe has retired and that the park is under new management that they love and then Joe is still pissed at Carol and starts posting pictures of her house on Facebook. So somewhere along the line, uh, when you rewatch this episode, you start to realize that this whole Joe in jail thing was orchestrated by the Jeff Lowe guys. And they start going in the documentary down this path with Gerritsen and with Alan Glover, who were not at all involved in the business with Joe. Um, where they have all this information about Joe's intent and Joe's and Joe's uh, like plans. Now, look, Joe Exotic is a shit talker. So every time anybody ever said, "Look, hey, let's kill Carol," he would go, "Yeah, let's kill that bitch." And he would he was on camera with his guns, and he said, "Look, if I ever go crazy, I will. This will be my Tampa gun, and I'll go down and I'll kill Carol." But look, it, there was a long period of time where he didn't do anything about killing Carol, and. Those are just the facts. He's not going to kill anybody. Uh, and the fact remains that he's in prison and Carol's alive. So that's a huge unifying factor to the notion that Joe is not going to get Carol killed. And the main guy that they're saying was that was paid to kill Carol in this murder for hire plot hates Joe and would never do anything for Joe. He's on camera two episodes earlier saying that he would kill Joe with a chainsaw. So we're talking about a guy who's loyal to the only person who uh, pays him, which is Jeff Lowe. So basically Jeff Lowe comes back from Vegas with a record. Joe sells some tigers out from under him. He finds this failing zoo. He finds out that Joe spent $80,000 on his political campaign that he lost of his own money. Uh, and then they're just sort of like start going after Joe for this murder plot. And so what happens is Garrettson and these guys all start feeling like valuable because they're talking to the feds. Uh, because Fish and Game is a federal agency, so they're acting as if it's the FBI. They keep saying the feds all throughout the thing, and it's literally, it's Fish and Game. And so what happens is they all pile on Joe, and Garrettson's on the thing talking about there's pictures of Joe and Belize, but we all know that that's Florida water, that's panhandle water, as if some guy who owns a strip club can tell where the beach is based on a photo on Facebook. I think that's really crazy and weird. Uh, and then what happens is Jeff Lowe hits up Carol through Garrettson and says, I will give Carol $500,000 and Joe on a silver platter. And then, he, and then Garrettson is on record saying that he was offered $100,000 to call Carol and offer her $500,000. None of this makes any sense. None of this like adds up none of this has a has like a logical through line but basically what happens is jeff Lowe gets in trouble and he's trying to bail himself out and bail out the zoo and so he decides that he's going to get joe involved now the documentary doesn't cover this at all but this is my speculation and it's not really that far-fetched if you just watch the thing what happens is jeff allen and james all of a sudden just decide that joe hired allen to kill Carol 
And even the, the details of talking to Alan is sort of shady because supposedly he goes down to Florida. Supposedly he goes there to kill Carol. And then he's even on camera saying that he apparently, he literally, and I quote, Glover goes, uh, Appar- they said apparently I chickened out. I didn't make it there and started partying instead. And I guess that was the best thing for me. What a weird scenario. There's a couple recordings of Alan and Jeff on the phone where Jeff is leading Alan down the path on, like, they both know the thing's being recorded to make it seem like Joe gave him some kind of money. Um, And that's the only way they could prove it. They literally had, Gerritsen had uh, federal agents call Joe and say, listen, we'll kill Carol uh, just send us some money, and then Joe never sent him any money. At this point, Joe has no money. He's hiding out with his husband. He's got a couple tigers on the side. He has no more business. He's beaten down. He's crying on camera about how he's been beaten. Uh, and he's got no ability to, to see this thing through. Basically, Joe is a 60-year-old man, and he's given up, and he's done. He's got, he lost the only thing that he cared about, which was his park. So... After like 20 minutes of no murder for hire thing going on, and that's literally, it was November through all of, uh, November of 2017 through all of uh, 2018, Carol Baskin can't get it, can't get on record that he tried to kill her. Jeff can't get it on record that he tried to kill her. Carrots can't get it on record that he tried to kill her. They can't get Joe. They can't get Joe. They can't get Joe. And then all of a sudden, July 2018, uh, Alan comes out of the woodwork and says, oh, he did give me some money. And then sort of never proves that he was given any money. Just says, hey, Joe gave me money and it was supposedly to kill Carol. So he doesn't kill Carol. He doesn't prove that there's any money. And then they grab Joe. They find tigers. They say, look, you did all the things that Jeff did wrong from a gaming standpoint. And you tried to murder this lady, Carol. We've been dealing with this thing. Honestly, it just feels like the atrophy of dealing with these maniacs for so long made them just say, you know what, we have to arrest somebody and we may as well be Joe. So basically they arrest Joe for being an ass and treating animals wrong. And he's in Oklahoma and apparently it's different rules than what happens in Nevada because obviously in Nevada there's probably tigers all over Las Vegas that have all the sorts of different rules. And Nevada is pretty much the, the loosest state from a gambling standpoint, from a prostitution standpoint, from a human rights standpoint. They basically say you can do whatever you want. You can have a gun in your ass and you can have a gun in your hand and you're not breaking any laws. Uh, so Oklahoma maybe is a little bit different. Uh, but basically... Episode six makes it clear that Joe is framed for this thing. Um, you got all these people trying to come down on Joe Exotic, and look, he he made his bed. He's a he's a he's a showman. He ran for office. He got himself in trouble trying to like not pay attention to laws, and it got him in trouble with everybody. Carol's mad at him with her fortunes. Uh, Joe, Joe, uh, Jeff is mad at him for basically like not running the type of zoo that he claimed that he ran. Uh, and then basically every animal person comes down on top of him. So in episode six, we've lost track of Doc Antle and his and his harem. We've lost track of what Carol's really doing other than coming at Joe. And uh, all that we've turned the documentary into is some weird pissing contest between Jeff and Joe and Jeff as we see from the documentary has no real moral compass Joe at least has a moral compass from the standpoint that like if he thinks it's a joke and he thinks it's fun and he thinks it's entertainment he's happy to be involved but if it has anything to do with uh, immor- immorality he's not really involved and and we gotta love that about Joe he's kind of a fuzzy dude who marries straight guys, uh, is trying to get laid all the time, and ultimately cared for his animals and really did do a good job for years running a weird backyard zoo. Jeff Lowe is a guy who's trying to have sex parties, is on camera telling us that his wife needs to uh, get back in the gym the second that she uh, has a baby. He's bringing tigers into hotels in Las Vegas in fucking uh, suitcases, which isn't that, I mean, if you cared about the Tigers at all, 
You would never close a tiger's face into a suitcase, even for 15 minutes. You got no idea what's going to happen from the time you walk in the door and up the elevator. You open the thing, and now there's a dead cat in your thing. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, so what happens is Joe meets a group of criminals that really uh, outdo him. And now there's, I mean, criminals are very good at like skirting the system and like understanding the rules. That's the thing that I find super interesting is that Gerritsen and Lowe and Allen all of a sudden have this in-depth knowledge of what it would take to pin a case for murder for hire onto Joe. They have all the details. They know exactly what needs to happen. They know that they need this uh, admission. They know that they need this. And they start becoming these detectives and trying to like uh, like get, get them, uh, you know, like... Pin, get Joe pinned for the crime again. It's the same. It's this Tanya Harding thing. It's like a bunch of idiots involved trying to like pin things on each other and like get themselves out of trouble. So what it feels like at the end of episode six is that Jeff Lowe used his uh, his information on Joe to get him out of his crimes in Vegas. He uses his information on Joe to get uh, Allen out of the crimes that were that were never committed. Uh, basically, they cut a deal that said if uh, if Allen was paid for a murder for hire but never murdered, uh, but then also tells that he was paid to be to murder somebody, then he's now not guilty of anything. Which nobody's guilty of anything, by the way. No one died. No one was murdered. The murder for hire never took place. So the whole thing is just it's. I mean, it, it is. It's the circus. It's it's sleight of hand. It's mirrors and sideshows. And now J uh, Joe Exotic is in prison. By the way, uh, I've received Joe's address, um, and I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna read it here. If you want to write a letter to Joe Exotic, I'm gonna post it on the page as well. Um, you can write a letter to Joe at where to find him in prison. He's um, Joseph Maldonado. Maldonado, sorry. My Italians, Maldonado Passage, Joseph Maldonado Passage. Um, and then you have to put REG 26154-017, 26154-017-FMC, Fort Worth, in Fort Worth, Texas, 76119. Uh, and that's where Joe's being held. Uh, and you can write to him directly. And... Uh, and figure out what's happening. So he's in Fort Worth, Texas. So I, I am corrected on the uh, on on the fact that he was in Oklahoma. Although I literally don't know. I don't know how he ended up committing a crime in Texas uh, when they found him in Florida, and that he was and that he's a an Oklahoma resident. So the end of episode six is sort of Jeff and his crew um, showing us their plans for their fifty acre zoo on the cusp of Oklahoma, Texas on the backside of a casino because, quote unquote, uh, Oklahoma's broke and they have to bring in all of these people from Texas. Uh, so that's the episode. It's really a mess. It's a big it's a big sloppy mess. And if you've watched the, the Tiger King documentary up through episode six, because you kind of feel invested now, uh, I have heard from people that they stop watching after episode four, which is kind of the, the, the time to stop watching. And to be honest, I have a little bit of buyer's remorse about doing a podcast related to this, uh, this entire documentary. It was a, a coronavirus response, but it is a hard thing to watch twice. And, it, and the more you do fall in love with Joe, the harder it is to watch him become manipulated by all of these people because he's just not I mean we all know a guy we all know a guy who's just not prepared uh, for the realities of the world you send him a lawsuit and instead of just doing what the lawsuit says which was a scare tactic you double down and you go after people that you're wronging and you know you're wronging but because you think that like morality or like being a good person is enough or that, like, because you think you're right, everything's going to work out. It's just not the way that it works. So what happens is being right caused uh, Joe to lose his entire fortune and lose his, like, favorite thing, his, his zoo business. Uh, and the pressure of all that broke his relationships apart with these other two men. And ultimately cause them to leave him or leave this planet because of 
all of the things that he was no longer uh, responsible for. Joe neglected his responsibilities in the chaos of conflict with a woman in Florida who sort of posed no threat to his business until he started poking around. Um, So it's really a sad story. And it's really like ultimately a story of like, you just keep your eyes on your own page. It's like as a comedian, if my entire career became like going after other comedians whose art I didn't appreciate what would my career become you're no longer doing the responsible thing about yourself um so that's the deal that's that's what the that's what the documentary is there's one more episode episode seven I refuse to watch episode eight with uh, which is sort of the Tiger King after show if you've been watching and paying attention to a lot of the things and the memes they've already come up with um uh, a mini series or a television movie or something they're already starting to cast apparently uh, Nicolas Cage has the Joe Exotic role which has upset some people like Diplo who wanted the role uh, so there's a lot of new chatter happening with the Tiger King thing and I think it's going to be one of these things where uh, the the final product is uh, better than the original product like uh, sort of how the disaster artist made fun of the room I think the the parody version of what we're going to get out of this is going to be a more rich experience. But ultimately, this is a moment in time. Uh, the Joe Exotic, the Tiger King phenomenon uh, sort of feels like it's come to an end, especially if, as somebody who's watched it twice. Uh, we're going to do one more episode that directly corresponds to this. And then I'm going to see if we can start interviewing some of the characters. I'm going to start writing letters to Joe. And I'm going to get Jeff Lowe as, a, as I have his phone number. I'm going to see if I can get Carol. And I'm going to see if I can get Doc Ansel on these discussions. And um, see what they think really happened with this documentary. It really, Ultimately, the whole thing uh, was a miscarriage of entertainment. Uh, a miscarriage of justice. And a real example of manipulation and tomfoolery. Uh, check out our episode, Tiger Crisis. We drop one every Thursday. Uh, and then we have the debate episode. We're going to debate uh, something later on today. Drop it tomorrow for you and check out the Instagram feed. After this whole thing is uh, said and done, uh, you can check out my other work. I'm a comedian. I have a podcast called Porn Stars Are People where I interview porn stars and don't talk about porn. Um, and then we're going to do a live show on May 8th on Facebook Live with some comedians and uh, we're going to keep doing those shows it's called just the tip as uh, people are still quarantined at home and hopefully they'll get some fun interesting uh, content from a bunch of comedians talking in a live forum thank you guys for listening and watching uh, please keep sending your comments if you feel like it's too political i'm happy to hear it i'm happy to discuss it um and uh, i do understand and feel where you're coming from if you have those uh, emotions so let's talk about it thank you guys so much for listening and watching dan at tigercrisis.com